Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, I think we have, with a little bit of luck, uh, Jeff Huge here of Alpha Insights as our guest today. Uh, Jeff, I hope you're there. Are you there? I am on the line, Larry. Great to be here. Well, unfortunately, Jeff, you have a monkey washing two coconuts trying to run this technical stuff. I should not be allowed in front of a computer at my age. Unfortunately, this is what I do for a living. But we're going to start out with Behold, the Bull Market of 2020. And, of course, all of my customers have been long Bitcoins for the last seven years, and we've made billions of dollars. And if anybody <laughs> believes that, who knows? Anyway, show the folks the difference between Bitcoin at 130% on the year and uh, – some of these other blue chips and stuff have not done nearly this much. Yeah, you know, Larry, it's interesting. Uh, people are going gaga about the you know equity market this year and how great everything's been. And in fact, uh, the Nasdaq's currently underperforming the S and P 500. So these big mm -hmm. cap growth stocks are no longer carrying the ball. In fact, it's actually been gold and silver, and to a much larger extent, it's been Bitcoin. As you can see, the spread. With Bitcoin up some 136 percent, and I think I I printed this chart uh, based on Friday through performance through Friday, so it's a little different uh, today, but very close. I mean, basically, Bitcoin's outperformed the S and P by fivefold this year, and uh, you know, by our um, measures, we think that there's continued upside. Our target this year. Uh, for Bitcoin was actually about a little under a hundred thousand. I think we were in in published uh, at ninety seven thousand five hundred. We put that target out back in June, and uh, you know we we've been standing by it ever since. Now um, we usually put a twelve month target out, and so that actually hit our expectations a little sooner than expected. Uh, as a result, we did some additional calculations. And we now believe over the next 12 months, Bitcoin can rally to about 125,000. I doubt it'll be a straight line, but um, I, I do think that it will get there. And, uh, you know, anytime you get this sort of a spread in terms of performance, you'd be crazy not to expect a pullback. I would watch those pullbacks closely and look for an opportunity to build a position if you're not already there add the positions uh, if you already have one foot in the water. And if you're all in, just uh, hodl, as they say, right? Um, yeah. if, if Bitcoin's just too much for you, Larry, then I think gold and silver is where you ought to be making your bets. We actually had a $2,800 target on gold. We hit, you know, darn near hit it. I think we got to 2790 or so. Uh, 2801. So, you know, within... Yeah, right. So, so yeah. they actually got there intraday. And, yeah. and well, you, uh, you know, from <laughs> Jeff, come on, be honest now. You said 2800 they got to 2801 I mean, let's be fair to our customers here, okay? Well, well absolutely, Larry. And, and I will I will take credit in one thing. I've been totally wrong about the stock market this year, but I've been totally right about gold. Um, about a year ago, almost this very day, um, I made gold our top actual trade idea for 2024. And I said at that time when gold was about 1850, um, I said I thought gold could go to 2550. When it got to 2500, I raised my target to 2800. We're now raising our target on gold for the next 12 months to 3400. And our target on silver is 40. Now, these are year ahead targets. So I think this is, this is going to be achieved in 2025 at some point before year end 2025 um, longer term i think gold actually has the potential to run to north of eight thousand we've got a published long-term target of eighty one hundred dollars oh wow that's a pretty good target holy cow 
That's a real. Oh, sorry, a spam call coming in. I can't have. It. Uh, Jeff, no, I'm going to no ask you a question about Bitcoin here because uh, I, I understand it's a blockchain and cryptocurrency and all that stuff. But how did when someone how do, when someone asks you? Sorry about that. And nothing I can do about that. The the uh, how do you explain to somebody? What a cryptocurrency is and what a uh, what Bitcoin is. I, I'm you know I got several degrees. You know probably I paid for six of them out of the four that I finally passed. But if I don't know what to tell them, I said you're not getting anything. You know you're not getting a coin. You're not getting you're getting a piece of paper. Is that correct? Well, no, it's it's a digital um, currency. I mean, it ba basically, um, cryptocurrency is effectively a um, a program, okay? It's a decentralized program where people okay. mine, uh, they solve a math problem to produce a result. That result is considered a digital coin and it's called Bitcoin, right? Um, Satoshi, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nakamoto, uh, Nakamoto uh, actually yeah. came up with this in 2008 and published a white paper on it and they started doing this. It's, it's There's tens of thousands of um, miners all over the world in various places that are solving these problems and calculating, uh, you know, the math uh, problems that are necessary in order to earn a Bitcoin. And, um, you know, every year, every four years, there's a halving. So you get half as much for the solution. And so um, it tightens up the supply. And so it's a supply demand imbalance then going forward. Um, there are only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever be produced. And so uh, unlike dollars, they can't be printed. They can only be mined. And once we get to 21 million, that's it. And so, you know, um, we're far from that at this point. And, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, essentially we're just supply constrained. And so, you know, as the world moves to Bitcoin, right now it's just a commodity, just like gold's a commodity. But at some point in time, it could be used uh, to, to uh, back a, a uh, a country's national currency. In other words, just like at one point, mm -hmm. you know, there was a 20 to 1 exchange ratio for dollars to gold and then 35 and then, you know, now it's a free market, right? Um, they could essentially just take a number of dollars and say one Bitcoin is worth $100,000 and say that's mm -hmm. just it. You know, for every 100,000, you actually have, uh, you know, one Bitcoin to back it in the in the central bank. I don't know that that's going to happen, but it's conceivably um, a theoretical possibility. Okay, now you have a thing here on the positioning of uh, micro strategies, which is uh, uh, Michael Slater. Is that his name uh, that yeah, owns that? Yeah, that's not uh, exactly what I'm saying now, here. This now, here's is, a question um, I have for you. Okay, Go last ahead. Thursday, it was trading for $480 per coin. I guess that's what it was. And I don't so follow this at all, Jeff's. Not. Go ahead. MSTR is, is, a, is a company. It's MicroStrategy. It's a company. Mm -hmm. uh, MSTR is the symbol. It's traded on the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, Michael, Michael Saylor is the CEO. Uh, the stock reached a, a all-time record high of 543 uh, last week. It's now trading yes. down substantially at 368. And, uh, you know, it was widely regarded to be overvalued uh, you know trading three times the value of the bitcoin okay currently hold. when we come we come back from a break jeff i've got a very important yeah. question to ask you okay about this day that we had last thursday okay we'll be right back with jeff huge alpha insights folks stay tuned Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Okay, folks, we're talking with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, and I have a question for Jeff. And on last Thursday, that stock, uh, MSTR MicroStrategy, had a high of 520, a low of 350. On that day, Jeff, I never look at stocks. I don't look at volume, but I know this is an ETF-related type thing, and it's had yeah. – that day, it did 100 million shares. So when I see a trade, that means one share. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 100 million shares traded, right. Okay, at 450, yeah, yeah. you multiply that times 100, and you get $45 billion worth traded that day. It closed down 200 from the high, and it's been dropping ever since. Am I looking at that yeah. the correct way? I, th I think so. I, I, I'd have to check the math to be 100% certain, but I mean, yeah, well. I, I think that's the general <laughs> okay. idea. And, you know, this chart okay. that we're showing here right now, uh, and I and I just kind of put that in kind of the off to the side. MicroStrategy could be a multi-trillion-dollar company. Um, mm -hmm. That's very laughable. I think it's consistent with the euphoric sort of positioning that we're seeing right now. This this chart shows the sentiment indicator. This is Goldman Sachs positioning model, and what they do is they measure stock market positioning across retail, institutional, and foreign investors versus the past 12 months. And so we can see we're at the highest bar that we've seen in over a 12 month period of time. And it's 2.3 standard deviations above the mean. Wow. That is uh, an extreme that we haven't seen since 1999 in this particular measure. Uh, so, wow. you know, the current reading basically shows that all of these cohorts of investors are effectively holding the highest long position in U.S. equities that they've held in the last 12 years and really the, the last uh, 25 years for that matter. Um, and prior readings that have gotten above one have tended to kind of coincide with 
uh, subsequent drawdowns of around 5 to 10 percent. But of course, when we get to these super extremes, uh, like we were back in 1999, um, they were followed by a 50 percent uh, collapse in, in the stock market. And so, you know, I don't think that we're necessarily setting up for a 50 percent immediate collapse right now. But it is a precursor for uh, what we should expect. And, you know, I kind of I kind of question this, you know, will it be a December to remember when you've got this sort of uh, euphoric sort of, you know, sentiment out there where people yeah. think a company that's currently got a market cap of eighty three billion dollars might be a multi trillion dollar company. I mean, that's like, a, you know, 20 to 30 X move. Uh, you know, if we're going to get the two to three trillion on micro strategy, strategy I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. The next one is this uh, thing called the Hindenburg Omen. I've seen that, and I, you have some nice graphs on this. What, what do you look at here when you're watching this uh, index, uh, Jeff? Right. You know, we've written about this many times in our in our newsletters and in our uh, weekly commentary to institutions in our Alpha Insights publication. But you know, the so-called Hindenburg uh, Omen was created by a mathematician named Jim Mika following the 1987 stock market crash as kind of a, a means to uh, identify uh, future drawdowns in the stock market or, or kind of an early warning signal uh, to indicate periods of vulnerability. And so, you know, uh, the one point that really bears repeating about this is that when you see multiple signals triggered in the vicinity of a 21 day trading period, it strongly increases the probability of a major stock market drawdown. Uh, and it oftentimes dictates uh, you know, the intensity or the magnitude of the decline. Well, what we can see here is if we go down uh, and look at the New York Stock Exchange Hindenburg Omen that, that occurred on uh, November 19th, that coincides with multiple Hindenburg Omens in the NASDAQ market, uh, one of which occurred on the 19th, another one of which occurred on uh, November 13th, and then the first on October 31st. All of these occurred within a 21-day uh, range. And, uh, you know, they coincide whenever you get like a NASDAQ and a NYSE Hindenburg Omen triggering simultaneously, uh, you want to ignore those at your own peril. Uh, they typically tend to precede or coincide with significant drawdowns in the market of at least 10 percent. OK, now we're going to look at the relative performance peaking. Boy, this is one heck of a move. So, well, this goes way back to the 1950s, for heaven's sake. My goodness. What we're looking wow. at here, uh, Larry, is we're looking at U.S. stocks as depicted by the S&P 500 versus or divided by the rest of the world, okay? Global stocks, X the U.S. And we're at a point where, uh, honestly, uh, this is reminiscent of Japan in 1990. Uh, and as you take a look, you know, go back to the 1990 on this graph, you could see the U.S. stocks were trading at their all-time low at that point. Well, what the graph isn't showing is that Japan was trading at the all-time record extreme of three three standard deviations above the mean, exactly where the U.S. is right now. And at that time, it was at its all-time uh, historic high. The U.S. is at a 75-year high based on the amount of data we have, but I would argue it's probably an all-time record high. Um, the thing that's interesting here is that, you know, we can we can consider uh, what's going on in the world right now. Well, we've got a new administration coming in. Uh, Trump just announced his pick for uh, Treasury Secretary Scott Besant. And uh, Scott made some comments on Friday saying, you know, we're going to do everything we can to grow our way out of this debt burden. And uh, he thinks he's going to do it through deregulation and energy independence. Uh, but they're also going to do it through cost cutting. You know, they uh, they appointed uh, Elon Musk and, and Rams, uh, uh, Ramaswamy uh, to co-head the new Department of Government Efficiency. And they are going to be going through and cutting spending across the board. And, and I think... Um, you know, at this point, I think the absence of huge government deficits is going to put significant pressure on top line growth and by extension, profit margins. And if that's the case, I think uh, U.S. equities relative strength or relative performance versus the rest of the world is likely peaking now and that we will probably see uh, – a, a weakening in this relative line. That doesn't necessarily mean that U.S. stocks are going to go down. It just means that they're going to underperform uh, 
other or the rest of the world, okay? And, and why would that be? Well, you know, because uh, the rest of the world is in extreme value right now, and the U.S. is extremely overvalued. And so money will shift to uh, these cheaper valuations because they have a much longer runway. And people are getting nervous. There's no question about it. And they're positioned poorly. Uh, you know, ev everybody's all in on stocks and they're crossing their fingers that something's going to happen here. But the one guy out there that isn't is Warren Buffett. And uh, he probably knows something from experience. Uh, he's now holding 50 percent of his portfolio in cash. Uh, he's never, ever done that before in his entire history. And so he is very worried about something. And he sold off 66 percent of his Apple stock, which was his, well, still is his, his largest uh, position, but was significantly greater than it is today. Wow. Now, we've got NVIDIA here. That's been the leader of the pack in the NASDAQ for quite some time, correct? That it has. And uh, our argument at this point would be that uh, NVIDIA probably is either topped or uh, is topping, uh, you know, just based on uh, the, the wave count that we're okay. seeing here. We can talk about okay, that. We got to, Jeff, we got to pay a few bills here, but please stay with us, folks. We want more of this young man's information because it's the best there is, in my opinion. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insight. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. 
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're back, folks, with Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights. We're talking about NVIDIA, so please continue, Jeff. Yeah, you know, as with many other tech stocks, uh, Larry, you know, the, the technical picture today suggests a termination of the prior advance. I think both trend and momentum show material evidence of a developing top here, if not a, a top. And, and, you know, our subscribers, uh, our newsletter subscribers will know that back in uh, uh, mid-June, we called the exact top of of primary wave three in NVIDIA when it got to 141. And we, we projected a downside move to at least $90 and we got to about 91. So we missed that one by a point as well. Now this you know most recent advance off that August 5th low was a five wave advance, but it was a converging or uh, some people would call it a rising wedge. We would call it an ending diagonal triangle from an Elliott wave perspective. In either case, it's a terminal pattern and so I believe that the breakdown below both the 10 week uh, moving average as well as that rising uh, uh, ascending trend line off the uh, uh, intermediate wave two and wave four lows um, suggest that we have terminated this advance at at least cycle degree and it's likely got significant downside. Our forecasted uh, uh, target for NVIDIA is $77. Uh, and, uh, you know, if I get within a point of that, I'll feel like I did my job here. But, you know, we've got a huge <laughs> double negative divergence in the momentum indicator. And that suggests, again, that this was a terminal pattern at multiple degrees of trend. Wow. And this is another one that everybody's excited about, and that's the Russell 2000. It's made another new high yesterday up there at uh, 2480, took out the high that we made uh, several years ago. But, uh uh, I don't see too much upside in this. It's, I see a really nice three-drive pattern on the upside. But what are you looking at here, Jeff? Well, um, I, I concur with your view. A three-drive pattern is exactly what we see. And, you know, we put um, our primary view, or I should say our, our preferred view in blue. Our alt view is in kind of that magenta pink. So we could be wrong here, but this is a choppy, uh, overlapping, almost lateral-like uh, trading position. We barely took out the um, November 8th, 2021 high uh, on uh, intraday yesterday. And I think, you know, it looks like we're putting in uh, a candlestick that will, looks like a terminal candlestick. If our, our primary or preferred count is correct, this ended um, minor wave C of intermediate wave Y of primary wave B of a larger degree three wave ABC corrective waveform known as an expanded um, uh, flat. And so if it is an expanded flat, we would expect a significant decline uh, from here. And it should be a sharp, uh, you know, like like impulsive sort of decline. We put uh, breakout or fake out as kind of our subtitle here, because if you look at the next chart, which is the value line geometric index. And if you want to forward that, Larry, uh, to the I next chart. Yeah, I got it now, yeah. Yeah, that, is, that has been unconfirmed by this, uh, this move in the Russell. So usually the Russell and the value line would confirm one another. You could see that the value line is nowhere near challenging uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, 2021 high uh, that was achieved on the exact same day as the Russell 2000 uh, uh, back in November 8th, uh, 2021. And so, you know, the, the pattern is almost identical. It's just a little more, you know, compact. Uh, we we call this a B wave of an expanded flat, and we're looking for a decline. No, the big difference between the Russell 2000 and the value line geometric is the value line also includes large cap stocks in addition to small cap. It's about 1,700 stocks. It's the 1,700 with the greatest revenue in North America. And uh, if you look at the Russell 2000, well, that's kind of like the smallest, worst stock. So the junkiest 
crummiest companies are actually making a new high where the highest quality profit generating revenue generating companies are failing to make a new high uh, based on you know and, and this is also a uh, weighted kind of by their re- it's actually equally weighted I should say and that equal weighting um, each each price point is kind of the it's not the average it's the median okay so you're getting the okay. median price change and we're just not seeing a confirmation there which tells me that that Russell 2000 high is suspect. Makes sense to me. Now we're going to look at the SP 500. Boy, I certainly believe uh, this one's right. But you know, I've been like I always say, I'm often wrong, but never in doubt. So what are you looking at here, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty of that as well, Larry. And what I'm really looking at here is that no matter what, whether it's our preferred or alternate count, uh, we think the S and P's in the final movement of cycle wave five. And if, if, you know, the primary account suggests that maybe cycle wave five has a little more to go, we're just above 6,000 today. We think maybe there's a move to 6,200. That's hardly worth the risk, in our opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. What's more likely is that if we do rally to 6,200, we're going to see a sharp reversal back to retest uh, that minor wave four low and possibly take out the uh, intermediate wave three high, which would confirm the termination of cycle wave five. And we would expect a a breach of the 200-day moving average and an aggressive move down into the 4,000s. So, you know, we could could potentially see something in the neighborhood of uh, 1,500 to 2,000 point decline in the S&P 500 into the first quarter of next year. If this, uh, uh, mm-hmm. if if our count's correct, and and honestly, I've had a tough time with this count. I've been wrong all the way up because it continues to subdivide, and it's possible mm-hmm. we'll subdivide even higher. But it's very difficult to justify the valuations, even with extraordinary earnings uh, estimates out there of like three hundred and six dollars, and that includes all the Trump's proposed tax cuts. They might not even come to fruition, but if they do, we could see three hundred and six dollars in earnings in twenty twenty six. But that's still two years into the future, and the market's discounting that in and trading at about twenty two, twenty three times that number right now. So um, that's a, a really aggressive valuation. Uh, for uh-huh. earnings two years into the future that may never materialize. Um, if, we're, if we're using trailing 12-month earnings, the market's now trading at 27, 28 times. Okay. I have some bad news for you, Jeff. There is a firm on the East Coast. I, don't, I can't remember the name of it, but they've been picking the top of this market for the last four years, and they haven't been saying anything about where we are right now. So I'm almost sure this is it. <laughs> And I'm, I've been wrong so I'm like you. I've been wrong so often. My nickname is to try it again, you know. So anyway, we're going to find out what it looks like. Let's take a look at this next one here, and uh, hope I get it up here. Oh, I forgot to change the. I'm doing it a little bit differently because I got. Uh, I'm technically challenged today. This is the energy uh, versus the S and P 500, and I think with these fracking things and increased drilling, what do you think is going to happen to crude? Well. Oh, we got to pay a few bills. Shut the front door and raise your hand. Stay with us, Jeff. Jeff, huge alpha insights. Don't leave us now, folks. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, back folk with Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights talking about energy and the S&P 500. Please continue. So Larry, yeah, so um, you know, I said we'd been wrong about the stock market in general. Uh, this year, you know, we didn't expect it to advance the way it has. But we, we've been very right about our sector picks. Uh, we, you know, we were long technology communications discretionary in the first half of the year when they did very, very well. We dumped them when we got long, uh, you know, the defensive names in the uh, third quarter. And now we're shifting into cyclicals. And we are, have really uh, been looking at energy as kind of our top new uh, pick for new money right now. Um, the relative strength of energy actually bottomed in August. And uh, we've been turning up from that, uh, you know, since. And we haven't broken back above its 200-day uh, moving average yet on a relative basis. But the actual price action of energy has been quite strong. Uh, we rallied up and challenged the all-time high last week. We've seen about a 3% pullback this week. But we think the setup is, is prime. And, and actually, uh, we think energy will probably be the best performing sector uh, for the remainder of the year and into the first quarter. And one of the reasons we like that is the sector valuation is so attractive. Uh, whereas uh, information technology and, and uh, communications are the most expensive sectors uh, in the, uh, the S&P 500 at about, oh, about 1.1 to 1.2 times the value of the market. Uh, Energy is trading at a big discount. It trades at about 14.9 uh, times uh, next year's earnings. And so uh, that is cheap versus a market in general that trades over 22, almost 23 times as we speak. And so uh, we like energy from a valuation perspective. But if you look at the next chart, Larry, the momentum is surging. Uh, XLE, which is the, you know, the spider uh, energy select uh, uh, ETF, has seen a, a massive uptick in its uh, momentum uh, mm -hmm. from the lagging quadrant to the improving quadrant. And it's moving kind of up and to the right. We think it's going to cross over into the leading quadrant in the next few days to weeks. And uh, it would be a very, very uh, strong supporter of our view on the energy sector in general to see that momentum uh, continue to surge higher. Wow. 
I really love these charts, my friend. Next one is IGE. Now, you going to tell me what that is? Well, it's breaking out to the upside with a lot of That's right. volume, it's, it's too. My pick. goodness, huge volume. Yeah, it's our top uh, idea of how to play this uh, recovery and energy. It's the North American Natural Resources uh, ETF. IGE is the symbol. Uh, you know, we put out a detailed report for our paid subscribers a couple weeks back, uh, suggesting that we would get a breakout. We did. It's now consolidating above that breakout line, and we think it's getting setting up to go again. About 75% of the holdings, there's 126 uh, different uh, natural resources stocks in here. 75% are oil and gas. About 15% are metals and mining. Uh, the largest would be like Newmont, uh, a gold mining company, and, and about 10% in forestry and other natural resources. So this is really kind of a commodity play, and it's uh, and it's not heavily leveraged to Exxon and Chevron. Like if you were to buy XLE, you're buying 20% Chevron, 20% Exxon. In this fund, it's more like maybe 9 or 10% in each one of those. And, you know, a much broader sort of exposure to uh, names like, say, EOG, which is making new all-time highs. So we think energy is the way to go. We think natural resources in general is going to be a great play for 2025. We think IGE is a great way to get exposure. It's a very well-diversified ETF, and uh, I don't think you can go wrong. Of course, you know, we think if it does break back down below, say, 44 uh, you should probably sell it and move to the uh, sidelines. We always like to put a stop loss in place just in case we're wrong. Go. We're not all Secret. knowing, you but, um, you know, we're pretty good at stock picking. And, you know, we would be buying the stock here at uh, under 47 with a stop loss below 44. I like that stop uh, protection. You have to have that. Otherwise, you're telling the market, I don't need a stock because I know where it's going. And the market doesn't like yeah. to hear words like that. Let's talk about no. the number one monthly newsletter that I'm actually aware of, period. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's huge insights. So please tell us about this, Jeff. Yeah, you know, we've been publishing huge insights, the big picture on Substack for the last three plus years. It's It's grown to be one of the most successful newsletters on Substack. I think we're like you know, number 150 out of 17,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm proud of the success. And, and I thank all of our uh, loyal subscribers. I think we have about 7,000 readers and uh, something like 1,000 paid subscribers right now. Our most uh, recent publication was uh, came out on November 2nd. It's actually, um, I think, quite interesting. We entitled it The Law of Gravity Based on Sir Isaac Newton's uh, Work. And, of mm -hmm. course, uh, that law is what goes up must come down. And uh, in there, we tell the story of the South Sea bubble and compare it to yeah, what's happening in the real chart. market yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotten a lot of attention. Uh, you know, our next publication will come out on December 7th. And we have a very, very interesting story to tell here, too. Uh, I'm not going to give it away, but, you know, anybody who wants to hear it. Uh, you can subscribe to the newsletter for free on Substack. Go to hugeinsights.substack.com. Just put in your email address. We send it to you the first Saturday of every month we publish this newsletter. Um, if you like what we put in the newsletter, we give away the first five or six pages for free. Then there's a paywall. And if you really like what we do, the work, you know, similar to what we're talking about today, um, you can you can become a paid subscriber for as little as, say, $12.50 a month uh, by buying an annual subscription for $150. In fact, we're running a Black Friday special, $99. It's the lowest price we've ever charged for uh, the uh, newsletter uh, publication on an annual basis. So next 12 months will be $99. After that, it goes back to $150 if you want to continue the subscription. But for new subscribers, um, you know, we're offering a discount on Black Friday, actually between now and Black Friday. So um, mm -hmm. if you want to uh, uh, get access to that, you can just contact me, send me an email uh, or, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll send you the link as well. And, and there's just a password to get that discount. But, you know, reach out, send me an email at uh, uh, jhuge at jwhinvestment.com. And uh, I'd be happy to help you uh, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, but again, the next publication is going to be December 7th, and I think it's going to be uh, – it's going to blow people's minds, put it that way. That's a very important day in history, December 7th, that's for sure. Hey, Jeff, yeah, thanks no for doubt. joining us today, buddy. You do great work, and keep it up. We'll have you on again pretty soon, and eventually there will be a mock or top. Not in my lifetime, but maybe in your lifetime, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> 
Let, let me just Thanks. also say uh, my web my website is uh, www.jwhinvestment.com. You can follow me on Twitter at alpha underscore insights. And uh, again, you can get the newsletter on Substack at hugeinsights.substack.com. Uh, paid subscribers actually get our top actionable trade idea every Wednesday. We send out a, a weekly publication. Home run. Can't miss, folks. Listen, have a happy Thanksgiving, Jeff, for you and your family. We'll have you on right after the holiday, uh, probably in the middle Sounds of December, great, probably around too. December Thank 7th. You. <laughs> okay, you. Bye -bye. Jeff. You bet. Jeff Hughes, folks. Stay tuned. We have one more segment to go, and we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, this is the S&P 500 cash, the ETF that mimics the S&P futures. You'll notice here that we had this beautiful island reversal 
broke down and then it held okay. And then uh, the news came out that there was going to be Camelot coming back to the United States, uh, moving there from France. And as you can see here, we've had a big move gapped up again today. So what we're going to look now is take it to an hourly level. So you'll be able to see that we did make a new high back here from the 11th. We have not done it on the futures yet. The futures have to get above 6054. Uh, they're at 6032 right now. So we're a heartbeat away. They'll probably get there. But this is what we're looking at right in here. So it's going to be interesting interesting to see what happens as we unfold here. I have posted the chart of the NASDAQ and as you can see hasn't gone above the 786 as of yet but it's still very very close and it could easily do that with this much. Now one other market deserves our attention. I don't know if it means very much but what we're going to do here is we're going to look at here at the daily on the treasury bonds i'm going to show you a very unusual chart you'll notice here this nice trend line and a beautiful three uh, spots to hit it all of them fibonacci 382 off of that 382 off, and it gapped above it leaving a gap right here in the treasury bond of you know the four, second largest futures thing that we trade and it's had a big gap we haven't exploded to the upside yet we need to get above 118.50 excuse me 118 and a half and then that will be a valid uh move because that means it'll be the biggest move we've had since the bottom has been made but this is known as an 89w it was defined by uh, Richard Wyckoff back in the 30s and whenever you gap above a valid trend line like this that has tremendous tremendous possibilities and this is what we have going right now in the uh, Treasury bond so uh, I will not be with you folks tomorrow we're going to go to the bionic lab and work on the bionic body that I'm working on and we'll see you uh, on Friday the day after Thanksgiving and live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless Steve Rose.